Well, hey there, guys. I'm Max the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Now, our first question comes from Gano3985. Were you shocked that there was no Zelda at E3 with the exception of Battle Quest? You know, not really, because really, I think Skyward Sword came out, like, what, what was it, about six, eight months ago? Um, it definitely hasn't been a year yet. And not only did we get Skyward Sword, it was the whole 25th anniversary, and we got Ocarina of Time 3D and the Four Swords re-release thingy. So, you know, really we got like three Zelda games, or maybe three, one and a half if you don't want to count the remakes and re-releases as full games. So, but that's still a lot, and you know, who expects a full Zelda game that soon after? I mean, yeah, we could have hoped, and I, I did hope, but it wasn't a realistic realistic expectation, and it's about what I expected. Uh, HPR Shredder asks, are you, mo are you more excited for Zelda 3DS or Zelda Wii U and why? I will say Zelda Wii U because Skyward Sword is my new favorite Zelda game, and I still stand by my prediction that the next Wii U Zelda game, or the Zelda game on the Wii U, um, is going to be basically the same controls as Skyward Sword. And I really want to see some of the ideas in Skyward Sword like capitalized on, especially things like uh, the swimming, which was barely at all used in Skyward Sword. I really would like to see that stuff again see capitalized on it, and I think that Zelda 3DS is going to be cool, of course, but it's going to be a side game experience, at least that's what I expect. Though, you know, I'd love to have both games be just as worthwhile of experiences. I mean, who wouldn't like that? Uh, Ardent Rage asks, Do you think the next Zelda game with, will tie the three timelines into one? Since all the other Zelda games have linked traveling to different times and dimensions, why not cross the rivers of time? Fun to think about, in my opinion. Well, I, I don't think it would be that interesting in particular, mainly because that would be a freaking mess. Uh, in particular, they'd have to write it exceptionally well with a really elaborate plot uh, in order to tie it together in a way that makes sense, because the idea of converging timelines is a pretty complicated one that barely makes sense, even in stories that do it really well. Um, so, and that's just not something I feel that Nintendo is generally capable of, uh, in general, but with the Zelda series in particular, they just don't show that kind of elaborate writing, and certainly not the elaborate thought put into their, like, magic or their science logic. So I really don't see it happening, or at least not happening in any way that wouldn't be incredibly messy. And I'd like them to take a bit of a break from the time travel thing, too. But, I mean, it's interesting that they use it as a recurring theme, but it's, holy crap, every single game, time travel, it seems like. Um, Fee-Fi-Fo-Fum asks, In your last mailbag, you said that you think the next Zelda game will be the latest in the timeline, but do you want to see a game closely after an existing game, or one later in the timeline than we have seen before? Uh, I actually have no real opinion on this. I don't think it needs to be any later after existing games than, like, any Zelda game that isn't a direct sequel is. I mean, most Zelda games uh, take place sometime after, long enough that they don't have to actually directly tie into the previous game on the timeline very much. And I think that that's kind of what we'd expect, what what I would expect, and what I think. Uh, there's no real reason to change that, really. I mean, I don't really expect Nintendo is going to start doing direct, uh, major plot continuations of the entire timeline, and especially not if they're going to do a new beginning thing where they're going to kind of like reboot a new storyline on the later timeline at the end of the timelines, uh, which is kind of what I expect. Uh, X asks, what do you think about having larger and more populated cities, tribes, slash, cities, slash, tribes, slash, areas in the next Zelda game? Well, I think it could be cool. I definitely would like to see Nintendo expand on the world, make it feel really believable, and have, like, a believable amount of people and whatnot, uh, without them being, like, completely meaningless, as in Twilight Princess, where most of the NPCs in Hyrule Castle Town you couldn't talk to. Although, that's fine if it's needed to maintain the illusion. It's better than nothing. Uh, I would like to see bigger cities and towns, but at the same time, it depends on the game, it depends on if it's necessary, because some of them thrive on the small tribe, tiny little groups of people idea. And I don't think it's necessarily completely crucial, but I would really like to see some expanded, like, NPC interaction and world building, because, you know, some, sometimes in the Zelda games, the worlds don't feel very complete. It feels like you're playing a game. Um... Uh, Tyrell Gugu asks, Do you know if Majora's Mask will be released on the 3DS? Uh, you know, a lot of people have wanted it. There's been a movement for it, uh, one I oppose, admittedly, but regardless, that's irrelevant to the question. Uh, they, uh, Nintendo has taken note of it, so they, they're aware. They think that, you know, they've commented on it being, might be an interesting idea. If people really want it, they might have to think about doing it sometime, but that's about as far as their statements have gone. We'll, we'll think about doing it. So there is no confirmation. I still kind of doubt it, but, uh, you know, that's about all we are, where we are on that.
The designer dogs asks, do you think Zelda is becoming too linear and less of an adventure? If so, do you think that it would be a good idea if Zelda's adventuring aspects became more like A Link to the Past or more like a PlayStation Network game called Journey, an adventure game that gives the player no direction on where to go and forces the player to feel around the environment? Uh, I'm not sure I get the distinction between the two. I'm, I'm aware of Journey. Uh, it, it looks like an interesting game, and I definitely think that Zelda could learn a few things from it. As was as was pointed out by Garrowx Icon in a recent article on the site, but I, I don't necessarily see there's a huge distinction between the two. And whatever opposite Journey has regarding storytelling or exploration, I don't think it actually needs to be something where Nintendo picks one or the other. I, in fact, I think most times really brilliant game experiences combine elements in a brilliant way. I don't mind a basic one. I wouldn't mind if a Zelda game, one Zelda game did one and one Zelda game did the other. But overall, I don't think there's a reason to really distinguish between the two. They can work in concert. I like the idea of having the, the free roaming, wandering exploration, but also some concentrated plot elements or concentrated action and whatnot. Uh, Sir Ursus asks, in several Zelda games there have been items like Rock's Feather or Rock's Cape. Who's Rock? Uh, Rock is actually in reference to a mythical white bird of prey thingy. Uh, I think it's supposed to be based on the Persian Simurg or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, so there's not, I don't know, well, you know, there's not a lot else to say on that. It's just based on that. It's probably only based on it because it's a big freaking bird. That's about all there is to it. Uh, Whirling Blade asks, In A Link to the Past, when you throw the Master Sword into the fat, fa fat Fairy's Fountain, she says she will give you something better than you already have. She gives you the Golden Sword. Does that mean she keeps the Master Sword and gives you a whole new sword entirely? If that's the case, you defeat Ganon without the Master Sword. Chi Guy 75 asks, I keep seeing videos of people playing Ocarina of Time in white tunics. Is this a glitch? I believe you're referring to videos where they actually have, like, uh, hacking the game and make modifications and change the color of Link's tunic and things like that. You might also see ones where he freaking floats up and flies and stuff like that. But yeah, that's common, and it's not a glitch, it's just intentional messing with the game. <laughs> Um, Yoshi Link 2 asks, what, who was Skull Kid before Majora's Mask, and why did he appear in Twilight Princess? Well, the Twilight Princess appearance is kind of a mystery. I like to interpret it as sort of like a, a Peter Pan, like, lost child, immortal child, living in seclusion kind of thing, just detached from society. But there's no canonical explanation, really. Uh, the Skull Kid, it might be a completely different Skull Kid, but the one in Majora's Mask, uh, there's actually a backstory in the game if you get the All Night Mask and listen to Anju's grandmother, and she tells her little stories. He basically talks about that the Skull Kid was an imp that was friends with the giants, and when the giants like decided to leave the center of Termina, which is where the clock tower was erected, they uh, they went off to sleep in the four regions and possibly actually created those regions. And the Skull Kid was really upset that they left him, and he just started doing a lot of mischief, and the giants had to stop him and kick him out. Uh, so that explains the ending of the game, in which basically he uh, you know he reconciles with the giants. Also, spoiler alert. Uh, Olivia asks, what are those flying things in Skyward Sword? They're scary! B which ones? Beast Burka asks, were you disappointed in Skyward Sword the way the playing the harp was? Personally, I like having to memorize different button patterns, but the past two console releases didn't have that. Well, you know, I think the harp had a lot of problems, <laughs> admittedly a lot. But I also thought it was actually pretty cool in some ways. One thing I like about it, and actually the Spirit Flute and Spirit Tracks is like this for me too, is you actually kind of had to play something. In Skyward Sword it's pretty easy, unless you're doing the Kina thing and the Lumpy Pumpkin. But uh, I like the idea of the music thing actually being a piece of gameplay, not just memorizing buttons and pressing them. Because that's just like using an item, and I question why it can't just be an item, or it can't just be a magic spell that you can just whip out and use. I like the idea in Ocarina of Time, but stretching it over across the whole series without it being like... I mean, it's just... without it being like a piece of the gameplay, it just feels like a cheap gimmick to me. I know this is kind of blasphemous but for the Zelda series, but I don't see why this music thing became this big thing, and I liked how Spirit Tracks and Skyward Sword made it gameplay. Obviously, Skyward Sword had problems, they needed to make it so you can play more of the songs, they needed to make the songs more involved, probably. But I like the idea of just doing them in these interesting gameplay sections, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of it and less emphasis on them being some kind of item you carry with you and you have to keep reusing it. There's a lot of ways to do it, and I think they should experiment with it a little more than what they've done. Uh, Chucker173 uh, asks, I know this is probably one of the most common questions, but why is it called The Legend of Zelda? I'd like to tell my friends who always ask that. 
Uh, this is actually, I've never been asked this before that I can recall. Um, it's called The Legend of Zelda because the story ultimately follows Zelda. It's the legend. It's the story. It's like a story, a recurring legend told differently every time. Maybe some aspects lost in translation. It's not the history of Zelda. It doesn't really lay out exactly everything that happens between all the games. Ninja Game is a standalone experience, a standalone legend that you're supposed to experience on its own for the most part, though they connect a little bit. And it's always mostly about Zelda. The, the storyline follows rescuing Zelda, Zelda's importance, Zelda's uh, how she helps you, or uh, her origins, you know, things like that. It, it's Ultimately, the stories follow Zelda. There are exceptions, but she's always been a central element of the series, and it's the legend of saving Zelda, more or less. All right, guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact page in the description, and I'll see you guys later.